All right, how you doing today? We're here at Mummer Y Block, and today we have a 312 short block going together. And what we want to do is share helpful tricks and tips with you about getting your Y Block to this point so that you can build an engine yourself. Now, not only tips and tricks for assembly, but a sequence of events that experienced builders use to save time and money. Now, the very first thing is a, if you have a core engine, job one is to take your core engine down and have it disassembled or do it yourself and have all of your parts hot tanked, magna flux, and inspected for size. No experienced builder will order uh, parts like pistons, rings, rod bearings, main bearings without knowing what they need first. And the machine work on this block's been done. So you can see the uh, deck has been machined, it's been bored and honed. Um, and that's the basic stuff. That's the basic stuff that a lot of people know. Um, if you come over here, you can see that the mains have been aligned, honed. And these are a lot of your basic tech um, terms that people know. But one thing people miss is um, some of the basic things that just need to happen. This block's getting ready to go to final wash. So one thing that we like to do is we like to chase all our threads. There's nothing worse than trying to put something together and having bolts that don't want to go in. Um, you know, especially when your engine's cleaned and you're trying to assemble it. Last thing you want to do is start running a tap and getting grit and grime in your engine. So, um, we chase every thread on these blocks. Bell housing, timing cover, head bolts, main bolts, everything. Even all the pipe plugs. You know, we'll go ahead. Because uh, old blocks like this, they have a tendency, you know, to not sit in the best places weren't always stored right so they'll get you know surface rust things like that in them and that's the kind of stuff you want to clean out um cam bearing bores as well like that's one thing where before we assemble any engine you know we will uh take some ticker tape whatever you want to call it flapper tape and we'll just clean off the bores and make sure they're shiny um, we're not trying to remove any metal. We're just trying to make sure that there's no surface gunk or grime. Uh, lifter bores is the other one. Um, before you final wash a block, you want to do the same thing. You want to make sure your lifter bores are clean and that you take a lifter and test fit and make sure that your lifters are going in free and that they spin. Now, in chasing all of our threads, we happen to find a broken brass fitting in our block. So that's another thing you're doing while you're sitting there chasing all your threads. You're also looking for little surprises. Sometimes uh, your shop that does your hot tanking or whatever, they miss something and you know, this is an older block, so obviously this was uh, where they had the oil pressure sender. Um, you don't want to have a clean engine that you're trying to assemble and then start having to drill on it and do that kind of thing. So, like I said, part of it is before you final wash, you're also giving the block one last final inspection and you're just double checking that everything's going to be go right when you assemble. Uh, any of these holes 
that uh, are through holes, especially these lower water pump holes. These like to fill up with crud behind the bowl. Uh, sometimes it can bind up. So uh, sometimes we'll just take a drill and we'll drill through there and then we'll chase it with the tap just to make sure that it's a good clean hole. And then obviously, you know, when you assemble a timing cover, you'll be putting sealer on these lower water pump holes. So after our final wash, we gave the block a quick prime job, wiped down some of the surfaces, and we're ready to install the cam bearings. All right, we just got our cam bearings knocked in. Cam spins nice and free. And you can see that the uh, oil hole in the cam bearing, oil groove lines up with the oil hole in the block really well. Is that Ford has a little hole to oil the distributor gear, so um, you don't need a lot going over there, but you do need some. And that hole is not going to line up perfectly. The one that matters the most is the hole coming from the main area to the bearing itself, but you do want to see that hole be open a little bit. All right, so we're going to show you a picture of the cam bearings. This is the number one cam bearing. It's easily identifiable because it's wider than the rest. And it only has one oiling hole in it. And this goes down and should line up with this front main. So it'll be down here. And this open hole will line up with the front main hole. The other four bearings are the same and they have three holes in them. You can see here. Now the center of the three holes is the one that lines up with the main bearing and the two on the side are the ones that will line up with your cylinder head oilers. And obviously your cylinder heads oil from the center main and so if you have a professional install your cam bearings for you it's good to check the center uh, cam bearing and make sure that your holes are lined up with the holes in the block to go to the cylinder head